I'm at the headquarters of Franklin Templeton here uh, in the San Francisco Bay Area. And John Templeton had this great quote, and he was a great humanitarian. Uh, he passed away in 2008, I think. Um, he said, the four most expensive words in the English language are, this time it's different. Uh, and w when you invest, you, you gotta be aware of economic cycles. And you have to know where we are in the economic cycle. Uh, and every now and then there will be um, a, a new secular growth investment area, be it internet stocks uh, or, or tulips in, in Europe hundreds of years ago, uh, or, or cryptocurrencies today. And we just have to know that um, fundamentals matter in the long run and valuation does as well. And so be careful when somebody says to you, uh, this time it's different. And so I thought I'd share with you a, a couple a piece of advice on, on investing. I've learned a lot about investing over the years. I made a lot of mistakes, uh, and you can learn from my mistakes. Um, probably the, 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 the best thing I ever learned, this is really simplistic, uh, is before investing in any company uh, or any stock, ask yourself this question. In five years, will this company and the sector it's in be more relevant or less relevant than it is today? Okay, and that will stop you from uh, investing in companies like Yahoo or my beloved Canadian Research in Motion, right? If, ask yourself, in five years, will more people search with Yahoo or Google? Uh, in five years, will, will more people use iPhones or, or Blackberries? That sort of thing. I think you get the idea. Just think longer term. Uh, and if you think longer term, uh, then instead of being a tourist and renting stocks, uh, you'll be a long-term owner. And Warren Buffett always says that when he invests, he invests with the, um, uh, with the idea of assuming the stock market's gonna be closed for 10 years. I love that, just think long term, longer term also, always. And, and when it comes to technology stocks, um, when a technology company goes into secular decline, uh, meaning if it starts to become a little bit less relevant, 99.9% .9 of the time, those are awful long-term investments, even if the valuation is cheap. You know, the valuation is cheap. This headquarters here of Franklin Templeton is beautiful. It's, it's, like, it's like an Ivy League school. I feel like I'm walking through a modern day Harvard or, or, or Yale. Um, Harvard Business School looks like this. Um, HBS, two thirds of HBS is BS. I could say that because I got rejected by there, okay? <laughs> All right, no, it, it is beautiful though. It's, it's a beautiful campus. And so um, other things I've, I've, I've learned is, um, when you start doing research on a stock, you should write up a one-page template, a one-pager which kind of outlines your thoughts on the company. And I'm gonna provide you with this template right here uh, as, as a download for you. Uh, trying to go inside, it's a little loud here. Sorry about that. Um, and write this one-pager before you buy the stock. And if you think about selling the stock, I want you to pull up this one page that you completed and, and, and read it and ask yourself, am I being too emotional? Uh, what is the reason I was involved in this stock in the first place? And um, if the fundamentals change for that company after you learn something new about the company and after you review the one page template that you created, uh, then you can consider selling it. Uh, otherwise, don't be a short-term investor. Uh, I promise you, day trading is not a sustainable long-term business model. You always gotta think long-term with, with every investment you make. Otherwise, what happens is you get fooled by randomness, right? You're, you're right for the wrong reasons or vice versa, right? So just, just always think long-term uh, when, when you're investing. And so when I invest, I look at the following things in this order, you know, per my template here. Um, I look at number one, fundamentals always number two valuation and then number three technicals meaning charts uh, and the only reason I even look at charts is just to kind of understand when I should start buying a, a, a company um, anyway I'm not gonna go into too much detail on technicals uh, as it's uh, it's not a great way to invest longer term but if you think about fundamentals and valuation longer term um, it'll help you invest in companies that seem expensive today on this year's earnings. I remember years ago, uh, I was investing in LinkedIn, I loved it, and everyone was saying, Chris, you're crazy. LinkedIn trades at 100 times earnings. 
and what they were missing, and the same thing with Amazon, I've loved it for years, whatever. Um, I'm not here to give stock tip advice, but I owned Amazon for years and people would say to me, you're crazy, it trades at 200 times earnings. But you know what? These companies only trade at three or four times earnings based on my earnings estimate in five to 10 years. You see, thinking long-term like that will help you weather the storm. And Warren Buffett said that the New York Stock Exchange is the only store in the world where consumers sell stuff when it goes on sale. Um, I love that quote. Buffett's amazing. Um, and, and he said, um, oh, he had another great quote. He said, every Thursday night, or every Friday night actually, he goes to his favorite steakhouse uh, in, uh, in Omaha. And he pays $10 for that steak. If that steak were to drop in price to $9, would I buy more of it or less of it? And he would buy, uh, he would buy more of it if it, if, it drops, if it drops in price. Uh, I, I know it's simplistic, but I think that Warren Buffett is, is such a successful investor, and, and Sir John Templeton was as well, because they think very long term. They think very long term. The four most expensive words in the English language are at this time, it's different. It's never different. Fundamentals always matter in the long run. Um, anyway, if you have any uh, additional questions about this, please let me know. Um, I teach a lot of stuff about finance. I've, I've worked in the hedge fund industry, which is short-term investing, which I hated. I worked in the venture capital industry, which is long-term investing, which I like better. So if you have any questions or topics that you want me to cover uh, in this daily vlog on finance or investing, uh, that sort of thing, please let me know. Uh, again, take a look at the, the attached template. Uh, I'll provide you with, and you know what I'll do actually, I'll provide you with a couple of examples of completed templates. And so uh, one great company I invest in, uh, which is actually pretty, their headquarters are close to here, it's called uh, NetSuite. Uh, and uh, I remember everyone was telling me at the time, they said, you're crazy, Chris, it trades at 150 times earnings. They don't get it though. It, it's actually cheap based on my longer term earnings estimate. And I kept it really simple. And if you think from a simple perspective, you'll do be better. And so. I'll run through my thesis uh, on, on NetSuite. So NetSuite's a cloud computing company, right? Um, and so the best way to think of it is Microsoft Office, but for the whole company. Instead of having Word, PowerPoint, Excel, you have um, financials, uh, you have the accounting software, you have the sales software, uh, you have manufacturing, procurement software, all that stuff within a company in the cloud. And when I first started looking at, at NetSuite, um, one of its competitors was SAP, a, a great big German software company that does traditional, used to do traditional old school software. Um, I gotta be careful what I say there. Bill McDermott, by the way, the CEO of, um, uh, of, of SAP is, is one of my heroes. Um, anyway, check out his book here, I read it. It was my favorite book from last year. But SAP, um, they, a while back, they focused only on old school software meaning not in the cloud, had to run on computers in a company. And at the time, when I was looking at NetSuite, um, uh, SAP um, had a market cap of, I don't know, it was like 70 or $80 billion, it was huge. And Salesforce.com, which is Mark Benioff's cloud software company, had a market cap at the time of, I think it was about $20 billion. And all that Salesforce did was, it not all, I should say, what it did back then was, um, sales software, but in the cloud. And what NetSuite did, which is only one component of what uh, SAP does. And what NetSuite did when I first started looking at it as an investment was they did what Salesforce did, they did sales. Not as good as Salesforce when it comes to sales software, but they did sales, they did procurement, they did manufacturing software, they, they did accounting software, human resources software, everything that SAP does, but in the cloud. So. If SAP's market cap at the time was close to $80 billion, and if Salesforce market cap at the time was close to $20 billion, and NetSuite was a billion dollars only, but NetSuite did everything that SAP did, but in the cloud, like um, Salesforce did, why can't NetSuite have a market cap of 10 or $20 billion one day? And so, I, I want to empower you with um, humbly with, with a way of thinking longer term about companies like that. Uh, otherwise, you'll you'll never invest in a tech stock ever. Uh, you'll you'll just um, uh, you'll just buy uh, and sell based on valuation uh, and and doing that in technology investing just based on valuation and not looking at fundamentals in more detail um, is, is is a great way to lose money. 
All right, so I'm gonna wrap this up right now. Um, uh, click uh, like uh, and subscribe if you want to. And again, if you have any other finance or business topics that you want me to cover, please let me know. I was just driving by Franklin Templeton here and I felt so inspired I had to stop and, and do this vlog. Thank you.